Hey everyone, so the plan for the garden today is to continue on with the transition from spring to summer. So you've already seen that I've removed all of the tulips and planted those down in the parkway. So today what I'm doing is basically filling the places where the tulips were. So I'm going to be planting up the seedlings that I started inside and then also direct sowing the seeds that are better to direct sow than to start inside and then transplant. And I'll go over which seeds those are when I get there. So first what I'll do is I'll take you around and show you where I'm going to be planting in the garden. So here's what the garden looks like right now. So in the back beds here, this one is completely empty and I know that I'm going to be filling it with gomfrina and then maybe a couple plants up front to trail down, but that's going to be mostly gomfrina. Back here, you can already see the four straw flowers that I planted because I was impatient. I'm going to plant, I think I have two more straw flowers and then I'm not 100% sure what else I'm gonna put in this bed yet. And I'm actually not 100% sure on a lot of things right now. So basically what I'm gonna do is get the plants in place that I know I want them there. And then I will kind of figure out what to do with the rest. In the center bed, I'm going to do zinnias. So I'm doing something very similar to last year. I have the four uh, Supertunia bubblegum vistas that are gonna trail down the side. The zinnias are gonna go in the middle. I do have to figure out, I think I have five varieties. I have to figure out which ones are going in here. But I do know it's gonna be the shorter ones because last year I had the giant binary, which were, I think, what was it? Over five feet tall by the end of it. And that was just way too tall for this center raised bed. So the shorter of the zinnias will go here. And then over here I have two bags of radishes, a bag of beets, and then this whole lower raised bed has beets in it. Now these were delayed originally in sprouting because the winter slash spring was so cold. And then we went right from like cold temperatures to really hot temperatures. So cool weather crops really like days that are like 50s and 60s, we jumped right from like 40 to 70. So even though they're growing, they're not gonna actually develop the vegetables in time so I'm just gonna pull them but luckily I can still eat the radish leaves the beets you can eat the leaves but I don't think they're even big enough to do that but I'll keep them as microgreens anyway then on either side of the bag with the tomatoes I'm gonna put the large zinnias so one of these will have the binary giant zinnias that I grew last year in the center bed the other one will have I forget the exact name but the word dahlia is in it even though it's a zinnia and those will go in the other bed because I think those can get about four to five feet so the height will work nice over here and then here on the ground are the seeds that i started inside so i have some nasturtiums zinnias gomfrina zinnias gomfrina and i forgot if i mentioned this but i came upstairs one day when these were still inside and my cats had just knocked over and destroyed a bunch of the gomfrina so i did actually start some newer seeds which are still very tiny but i think these will be enough to plant in the raised beds. Um, also, these have been hardening off, so they've been just constantly outside like the last few days. You want to make sure you're hardening off anything you've started inside so that you don't bring it right outside into the harsh weather and they die. Another thing I wanted to mention is that in terms of just kind of refreshing the raised beds, now when I planted the tulips originally I added compost and then I haven't really done much after removing them so because the soil level was still pretty good, the bulbs didn't pull out a lot of dirt with them when I removed them, I just added in compost to fill the raised beds back in. So I didn't add any new potting soil, just added new compost to all of the beds except for the ones where the beets are still growing in. But I'll show you what I'm doing with that one when we get there. But first, I think I'm going to start with the gumfrina bed since it's already empty. I know it's going to be planted with gumfrina, so I'll pull out, I think I have five varieties. I will place them in the bed and then I will show you what my general thoughts are. The gumfrina is in its place. I've decided only put four of the five varieties here. So I have in here kind of just alternating strawberry, orange, carmine which is the one i grew last year which is like a fuchsia and then purple and then i just started against strawberry orange carmine purple all the way um the fifth variety i have is i think just called pink it's a very light pink whereas these are all very vibrant so i want to keep the vibrant ones here and i think it'd be kind of sweet to have the light pink ones growing in just a small pot altogether. i might do one of my terracotta pots but also those were the ones most destroyed by my cats, so I don't think I would have had enough to kind of alternate in here. Now, Gomfrina likes to be spaced about six to eight inches apart, which these are probably about six inches. They'll get somewhere around 18 to 20, although I think mine probably got a little bit taller than that last year. They definitely reached higher than the wall here. So compost is in here. 
soils in here. I'm going to add a little bit of biotone and then we will get these planted. Here is the gomfrina all planted. So a few things, I do leave the paper wrapping on the seedlings. It dissolves very quickly and that's what I did last year, it worked fine. Also if I peel off the paper, sometimes I can break a root. So I'd rather just be as delicate as possible with these. Um, that's also why I use the hose the way I do. So I like to use the shower head. There's a mist function, which is you know even lighter, but it doesn't soak the soil fast enough at all. So I use the shower head, but I don't, turn the handle on all the way. So it's like, I'd say half pressure. And I just try to be as gentle as possible around these. Now, this is the drip system and how it was last year. And that seems to do well enough for this whole bed, but I'm gonna be resetting up my drip system probably this coming week. So I'm not sure if this is going to stay like this or if I'm going to change it up, but I will take you along with me when I do that. So next I'm going to do the two taller varieties of zinnias because I know those are going to go in the two black grow bags. I think I'm going to do one variety in each of its own bag. So I have the Benaris Giant Mix and then I have the, I think it's just called Giant Dahlia Mix Zinnia. So they are zinnias even though the word Dahlia is in the name. So I'm going to get those planted. Those like to be about 9 to 12 inches apart. I'm probably going to squeeze them like 8 inches apart in the grow bags. I think I did that in the center raised bed and they were fine grew to over what was it over five feet so i think they'll be happy in those bags so i'll get those planted and then show you what those look like so nothing about these are appropriately spaced but here are the dahlia zinnias now i'm noticing that now so we are i think around 1 p.m which why i decided to plant during the hottest part of the day i have no idea but i'm noticing that this bed casts a shadow on these two basically when it's not the morning time so in the morning the sun shines from behind me so these all get hit as the sun goes this way the bed here is blocked and then obviously in the evening this wall blocks the sun if these were taller than the bed this would not be a problem so we'll just kind of see how these do uh, if i just have to move those or pull them that'll be fine same thing with the spacing if this gets out of control really quickly i can just pull up a, a couple and replant them so I'm fine with trying them too close and just seeing what happens. Then over here I have the Benary Zinnias. So this, I kind of did just the same thing, one in the center and then a ring around them. So those are good to go. I think I have one seedling left of each variety, which I think I'm going to plant up in a nursery pot. And then if one of these dies or I find another place to plant it, I'll plop it in there. So next I'm going to do the far bed in the corner that has the four straw flowers in it. I'm going to add the other two straw flowers. I don't know if I'm going to add the asters. So I started the asters basically because I had them from last year, uh, the seeds I had from last year, and I didn't want to throw them away or give them away, but I don't remember loving the flower. So I'm trying to think if I'm going to plant it and then just see if I like it. If I don't, I can pull it or if I'm going to wait and maybe find another spot, but I'll go figure that out. I decided just to add the two additional straw flowers here, not the asters, because I think what I want to do is find two more Supertunia vistas, probably a deeper color. I had two in here last year before they got completely covered by the melon plants, but I think I'm going to plop one in the corner here and one in the corner here. So I'm going to leave that space open. Also, when I was editing the video where I removed my tulips, I then remembered I had carrots in here that I completely forgot I planted. So the majority of those got pulled up when I removed the tulips. So 
I don't know if anything happens. Maybe I'll have a random carrot in here, but here is what we are looking like here for now. Here's where we're going to work next. So I'm going to pull up all of the radishes and beets. I'm going back and forth on maybe leaving a beet bag, but I don't think there's any way with the temperatures that we have that these beets over here are going to actually develop. And then the radishes, you know, even though they are much further along than the beets, I mean, if I pull one up here, they're basically one long tiny root. And these I was really excited about because they were white on the outside, pink on the inside. I think I'm just going to try again during the fall. We seem to have, I know I'm going to jinx it, much more stable falls weather-wise with the cool weather than we do in the spring. So I'm going to pull these up, save the leaves of them to use, and then we'll fill these with more plants. The bags and this bed are now empty of the radishes and beets. My plan for this bed is to overcrowd it and I don't know if it'll work, but we're gonna find out. So on the sides here, I have two dahlias. Now these were shorter, I think they were called decorative dahlias. So whereas these will get, I think these can get up to like four to five feet. These are somewhere between two to three feet. So that's why I'm putting them in this lower raised bed. Then between them, <laughs> I'm going to, attempt to put sunrich summer province sunflowers. So these sunflowers here, they're single stem. They only need to be placed, I think it said four to six inches apart. So they can be pretty close together. I'm gonna see if that works because I do think it would be nice to have, I think these are an orangey color. So orangey colored dahlias, some yellow sunflowers in between that those can get, I think up to five feet. So I will have to stake the sunflowers, but we'll see. How this happens. I will say I do feel fairly often like I'm doing things that I don't know if they'll work or not, but don't let that fear of not feeling like you know what you're doing stop you from doing what you want. So try it out. If it doesn't work, one, you'll learn something for next year, and two, you can move things around. So like I mentioned with, like for example, the zinnias, if they're too close together, I'm fine just digging them up, moving them around, or if I have to dig one up and just get rid of it for the season, that's fine as well. So I'm gonna try this out and we will all learn together how it goes. The two dahlias are in place in the corners and I wanted to mention a couple things. So one, because I had just refreshed this bed before I planted the beets, this was the only raised bed I'd added compost to in the spring because the rest had tulips in them from the fall. So I didn't feel the need to add any more compost here, especially because the beets really didn't do much. So I don't think they used up many of the nutrients. Second, I planted these two first because I know they would do the most disturbance to the soil. So I wanted to get these in the ground first and then I will go ahead and sow the sunflower seeds right now. These sunflowers want to be sown a half inch deep. So I'm just going to use my finger, estimate about a half inch. I think I'll probably space them there. And again, just estimating like four inches between. Also, I am terrible at estimation, so that's always fun in the garden. Um, but the reason why sunflowers prefer to be direct sowed is that they generally have one long taproot. And if you start them from seed, there's just more of a chance of root disturbance when you transplant them. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see if the center one, yeah, pretty well aligned with the center of the raised bed. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drop the seeds in there and we'll get it all watered in. And the seeds are now down here in the holes, so just lightly covering them up with the soil. Honestly, if our growing season was longer, I would love just to direct sow everything, not have to worry about keeping things alive inside, hardening off, but with a shorter growing season in Chicago, it is nice to give some things a head start. So I'm gonna water these in and then see how they do. I think the plan, because here is pretty empty, I might just get like one, maybe like sweet potato vine or trailing plant just have something kind of spilling down the edge or maybe one of my nasturtiums. We'll see. Okay, well, here's what happened. I didn't add just one. I added three nasturtiums. 
we'll see what happens. I'm aware I have a problem, but I'm okay with that. So that bed is done. Next, I'm going to work on the most important, this center bed. Again, this is obviously the center of the garden. It's what I see from inside. So I want to make sure I get this right. And there are three different zinnias that I'll either put all of them in or some of them in. So let me go show you which ones I'm talking about. So these are the three zinnias that I have potentially for my center bed. I think I'm gonna do all of them. Now I know that you cannot tell these apart, but here from left to right, I have Zinderella peach, Oklahoma pink, and then queen lime orange. So it'll be very like orangey and pinky colors. This one here is 24 to 30 inches estimated height. These two are 30 to 40 inches. So what I'm thinking is the shorter one maybe on the edges, so like around the outside of the bed, the taller ones in the middle, and then just jamming as many in there as I can. All of these varieties of zinnias are new to me this year. I've had the Queen, I think it's the Queen Lime series recommended a lot by different people. There's a few different varieties, so I'm excited to have that. Basically, I feel like what happened between last year and this year is the plants that I liked last year, I just got a lot more varieties of that type of plant. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of figure out the layout of these. I'll show you what I'm thinking and then we'll get them planted. And then I think that might be it for the day. I've laid out the zinnias. So my plan is Zinderella peach, the shorter ones here in the back along the sides. And then I have Oklahoma pink and queen lime orange. I hope I like it. All of the zinnias are in the ground and watered in. I am going to keep an eye on these two super tunias because they spread fairly quickly and just make sure that they are not covering the seedlings before the seedlings get tall enough to stand above the super tunias. But I'm really excited. Everything looks so small right now, but I know it's going to start filling in pretty quickly. So now I have everything in place that I 100% knew where I wanted to put it. And I think I'm gonna stop here, kind of sit with it for a day or two before I figure out where I'm gonna put the rest of these plants. I do still have some spring plants to pull that I'll need to replace. I have some empty pots that I can fill, but I'm just really excited that the transition to the summer plants and the beautiful zinnias is finally happening. So. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go back inside into the air conditioning and then I will see you all in the next video. Bye.